Kampala is the largest and capital city of Uganda. I've lived in Kampala for more than 26 years. It's a diverse city with historic buildings, panoramic views, and is rated the most livable of all the East African cities. <laughs> you majorly speak English and Luganda, but what stands out the most are the people who make Kampala a fascinating corner of the world. Today I'm taking you to my top seven things to do as you explore Kampala. Welcome to Gaddafi Mosque. I've never been in here. Located on Kampala Hill, Gaddafi Mosque, now the Uganda National Mosque, is the largest in East Africa. As you can see, this is the beautiful look of this mosque on the outside. If you want to see the seven hills of Kampala, this is one of the only places that you can come to. The building of the Gaddafi Mosque started in 1972 after the establishment of the Uganda Muslim Supreme Council. In 1976, the building of the mosque halted until 2001 when it resumed with the support from Kanoma Magaddafi, the late former president of Libya. Yes, go down. You put your head down. This is the holy book of the Muslims, and this is the Quran that's showing us how they read. You recite it kind of like using melody. Ikra read, Your Lord is the most generous. If it is a big event like after Ramadan, the number is expected to be around 35,000 Muslims. So right now we are entering into one of the most interesting parts when you come to the Uganda National Mosque. I was the first to reach up here in exactly 30 seconds. Whenever you come to this place, it's always a very beautiful and unique experience. Kampala is a busy city filled with a lot of business, but when it's lunchtime, this street called Chinamandu has a wide variety and some of the best and cheapest food in the city. Uh, basically, they have all sorts of food. You can see all the way from that other side up to here. Uh, boiled food. Now we have here the barbecue section. So we're going to order some food here in Chinamandu. My colleagues and I are here just trying to get some food. So this is the style. This is how it goes down. You eat amazing food, get entertained, as well as meet some of the most friendly people in Kampala. So if there's one other place that you need to check out when you come to Kampala, this is the Baha'i Temple. There are only seven Baha'i temples referred to as Baha'i houses of worship in seven continents of the world. One of them is located in Kampala, the only one on the African continent. Built in the year 1962, the house of prayer has nine entrances and the interior is very beautiful with a dome that creates echoes when you snap your fingers. Now filming the inside of the house of prayer is prohibited so you could only see the beauty on the inside when you visit the temple in person. Look at all these beautiful trees lined up here. The place is so green and really looks so beautiful. What you see behind there is the Baha'i temple. Entry to the, to the temple premises is actually free. This is a very beautiful place. The flower gardens here are really beautiful. I just want to walk around and show you uh, how amazing and beautiful these flower gardens look. This crafts market located along Buganda Road in Kampala is a great collection of crafts from Kenya, Uganda, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now look at these amazing pieces of art that you can buy as a gift or a souvenir. Hi, I'm Rachel. This is a, a, a African village, Exposure One. It's my shop to all come here. We have a lot of stuff and at a very cheap price. 
Exposure Africa is the largest crafts market in Uganda, and buying some of these souvenirs will impact the lives of the artisans who created the art piece, their families, and the person you purchased from. The prices are usually reasonable, so you can find various handicrafts from wood carvings to leather items, Ugandan shirts and dresses, even Ugandan chairs and small tables that are nicely carved with a village or wildlife scene. Uganda is named after the Buganda Kingdom, which encompasses a large portion of the south of the country. Kabaka is the title of the King of the Kingdom of Buganda, and this palace is one of the most famous sites in the history of Uganda. The palace is found in Mengo and has been in existence since 1885. During the tour, most people expect to enter the palace building, however, the tour only covers the exterior. You will learn some of the history and conflict between Buganda and the central government, and a visit to Ida Min's torture chamber, which was originally an armory, but it's estimated over 200,000 people died inside the torture chambers. Part of the experience is a showcase of the back cloth making, which is an ancient craft with the Buganda people. The inner bark of the mutua tree is harvested during the wet season and then in a long and strenuous process, beaten with different types of wooden mallets to give it a soft and fine texture and uneven terracotta color. It is a strong type of a tree, the, the fig, it doesn't die off, instead it, it regrows. They don't break, they don't crack. Mm. The experienced guide goes ahead to explain the process and some of the final products of the process are on display and you can purchase to support the artists. Okay. Now this is your side and this is my side. Now you can start from anywhere as long as there are more than one. Kampala is a historically rich city with numerous monuments to commemorate notable people and events. Many of these monuments are free and easy to access in the city center and a few on the outskirts. The monument of the first president in Uganda and this is actually right next to the independence monument. So from independence, we'll be able to see the first president of the Republic of Uganda. That is Sir Edward William Frederick Mutesa. Some of these monuments have gone as far as being used on the paper notes that we use for transactions. You can see that monument right there, it's on the 5,000 shilling note. The independence monument, my favorite, is situated in the heart of the capital and is one of the most distinctive landmarks of Uganda. The monument depicts a man unwrapping a child and raising the child to touch the sky, which signifies a newborn country let free from colonialism and its bondages. Well, there are several other monuments like the World War Monument, the Impala Monument, that you can always check check out when you're around the city. Now last but not least is an experience I discovered through the Tuvayo app. We meet Hamid who has a very interesting story of how beekeeping started as a hobby that turned into a passion and now a business. Now my expectation was to go learn how to harvest honey and take some of it home. That is what we're actually going to be doing here is uh, honey harvesting. If you look around this place, it's actually a garage. You wouldn't expect to have uh, bees in here. And that's why you see uh, I'm in a suit. Just make sure we are protected. Uh, the specimen raj is right over there. We're trying to support the queen bee and the queen bee is bigger than all the other bees. Hamid is very passionate about bees and beekeeping. We have the cup brood, we have the eggs, we have the pollen stores, we have the honey stores. This is literally everything in one hive. As you can see this here, this is propolis. Someone was asking where do the bees wax come from? The bees, if I pick for you a bee and look at the under part, you'll see that they sweat out wax. So if you ask an architect what is the most efficient use of space in any place, they won't tell you circle or triangle or square or rectangle they'll tell you hexagon. How do the bees know that? That is the thing, man. I'm telling you something which is very incredible and the more you get to know, the more you really appreciate the value of a honeybee in this life. At the end of this experience and after listening to his story, my perspective about bees had totally changed. Well, thank you so much for watching this video to the very end. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment and if I left out any of your favorite locations, just leave it in the comments so I can feature it in the next video. Now don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I'll catch you in the next video.